Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I can't believe that it's October already. Where did the time go? It's the fall season. I love fall. It's so cozy. There's so many fun activities to do. I am so excited that fall is here. Today I have some super cute fall DIYs for you. We're painting pumpkins, creating a fall wreath, and making this super cute wooden bowl candle. I am obsessed with how all of these turned out, and I know you're gonna be too. So let's get started. Okay guys, I have been seeing these wooden dough bowl candles everywhere, and they're so pretty. I love them, I want one, but they're pretty pricey, and they're just a little bit too expensive for what I'm willing to pay for a candle. So I am going to try and create one myself. I tried to find just the wooden actual dough bowl online to make my own candle, but those are super expensive as well. So I've been searching the internet, trying to find what would be the least expensive, but also still cute. And I found this. It's so cute. It's such like an organic shape. I got it from Amazon. I'll link it below. Um, will it be too shallow? I don't know. <laughs> Another thing, I really wanted my candle to smell amazing. I wanted it to smell like fall. So after hours of researching and looking around the internet and reading reviews, I found this. It's called PB&J is the brand. And I got it in the scent Harvest Spice um, because there were so many amazing reviews. And when you smell it, oh, it smells so good. Oh, it smells so good. It smells like fall. <laughs> It's like very, um, it has like that fall like spice smell, but it also smells sweet as well. And then I have my soy wax. I've used like half of this bag. I got it from Hobby Lobby a long time ago. I think this is a pound in here and I'm just gonna use all of it because I don't make candles very often and I don't know how far a pound of wax is gonna go. So we're just gonna try it out. To melt the wax, I turned my stove onto medium heat and created a double broiler effect by putting my glass measuring cup into a pot of water. I then put my wax into the measuring cup and waited for it to melt. While the wax was heating up, I hot glued three wicks onto the bottom of my bowl. If I were to do this again, I would do four wicks though. To keep the wicks standing straight while the wax cooled, I used clothespins and I clipped the clothespins to the wicks and then to some bamboo skewers and then balanced it all between a couple of cups. Once the wax melted, I dumped in the entire bottle of fragrance, stirred it up, and then poured the wax into my bowl. I did end up having too much wax for my bowl, so I poured the rest of it into another bowl I found at the thrift store. I would say that the wooden bowl holds about three-fourths of a pound of dry wax. I let my candle dry overnight and then took off the clothespins and cut the wicks down to size. Candles have something called a cold throw and a hot throw. A cold throw is how the candle smells unlit. And this one smells amazing. A hot throw is how the candle smells when lit. This one doesn't have the best hot throw. It still smells good, but you can only smell it when you're right next to it. And it's not powerful enough to fill a room with the smell. So if you don't care about having a strong smell, then this will be great. If you did want a stronger smell, another option could be to find a candle that you like at the store, melt that down, and then pour it into your wooden bowl. All in all though, I think this is a beautiful candle and would even make an amazing Christmas present if you're thinking about that already. This next project is the easiest and most simple project ever. I found these pumpkins at Walmart for 98 cents each. I really like the shapes of them and that they're miniature and I'm just gonna paint them to match my decor. So I'm mixing baking soda into all of my paint. This technique gives your project a lot of texture and I feel like it makes it look more high end and not like you just painted styrofoam. I'll put the names of the paint colors I used in my description box below. I am in love with all of these colors. They just feel very warm and cozy. And I ended up doing two coats of paint on each pumpkin. When I decorate for holidays, I like my decorations to still go with the colors and aesthetic that's in my house. So I feel like these tiny pumpkins are perfect because you can paint them to match your existing decor and they're small enough to add a fall vibe without being too in your face. And just look at all that beautiful texture. Ah, I love me some good texture. I wanted to elevate my pumpkins just a little bit more, so I took my hot glue gun and my trusty raffia ribbon and wrapped the stems. When wrapping the stems, I found it most helpful to glue a small piece of raffia over the top of the stem and then to take a longer strand of raffia and wrap the stem from top to bottom. For our 
our wreath, I'm starting out with the inside hoop of a wooden embroidery hoop and some macrame cord. I cut 36 strands of cord and attach them to the hoop using a lark's head knot. To do a lark's head knot, fold your macrame cord in half and bring the middle point under the hoop. Take the ends of your cord and pull them through the loop and then pull on the ends until your knot tightens onto the hoop. I've made a bunch of different macrame tutorials, so if you're interested in learning how long to cut your cord or different patterns or different knots to use, then I'll link some of those videos down below for you. I've had the same wreath hanging on our door for years and I just never take it down, so it's the perfect time for a new one. Once you have all of your macrame cords tied onto your hoop, we are going to do something called a berry knot, and you can see I've already done a few. To do a berry knot, you first do four square knots in a row. You do a square knot by taking your far left strand and making a shape that looks like a number four. Make sure to put your strand on top of the two middle strands. Next, take your far right strand and cross it over the horizontal strand, then behind the two middle strands and through the number four loop towards you. Then pull the two outer strands tightly until they form a knot. And that is half of a square knot. To do the other half, do the exact same thing, but start on the opposite side. So instead of a four shape to begin with, you'll start with your right strand and make a backwards four. Once you've done four square knots, you're going to take the two middle strands and thread them backwards through the small gap at the top between your first initial lark's head knots. Pull that through tightly and then secure it by doing another square knot, making sure the two outer threads tighten around the base of the berry. It does seem a bit complicated, but it's actually very easy, especially if you get the square knot down. Now that I've got all the berry knots done, I'm going to make a large triangle down the middle. I'm doing this by making square knots. The triangle shape is formed by doing one less square knot on each row. I then lined my triangle by doing a diagonal double half hitch knot. To do this, take an outside cord that is closest to your first square knot and place it on top of the cords that formed the triangle. Then, from the cords that make up the triangle, take the farthest left cord. Make a number four shape and cross it over and around the diagonal cord and pull the end through the loop towards you and pull tight. Do that one more time with the same strand and then move on to the next strand. So you're doing the knot twice per strand and I did two rows of these knots. By the time I was done, some of my strands were very short, so I decided to stop there and cut my cord so they were all even. And then for the edges, I decided to do just smaller versions of the triangle in the middle. I wanted my ends to have a frayed look, so I untwisted the strands with my fingers and then went back through with a comb to make them fluffy. I then hot glued flowers onto the side of my wreath. 
I was going to buy fake flowers, but those can get just so expensive. And Tanner had surprised me with flowers a couple months ago, and I left them in the vase so long that they dried up. I thought that they dried so beautifully and the colors were just so perfect for fall, so I decided to use those on my wreath instead. I've never made a wreath before, and I know dried flowers can be quite delicate, so we'll see how long it lasts, but it's been out for a few days and it's been fine so far. I am just so in love with how this turned out. So I asked Tanner to take the final shot of the wreath, and this is what I got. <laughs> I love him so much. Guys, I'm just so happy that fall is here. I love how all of the projects turned out. My favorite project would have to be the wooden bowl candle. I love it so much. I love how cozy and warm all of these decor items made my house. I'm so excited for this whole fall season. We already have our Halloween costumes planned out. Brooks is gonna be a lion and he's so cute. <laughs> Do you guys have your Halloween costumes picked out already? Let me know in the comments below, I wanna know. <laughs> if you guys did enjoy these DIYs, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, give it a like. Also, hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you all back DIYing with me each week. One of the biggest spiders I've ever seen in my entire life just walked into our house. And <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I get so scared around spiders, especially the big ones. If they're in webs, it's okay. If they're in webs, it's okay. They're, they're staying in, in their own little spot. But the ones we get, are giant and they just roam around at their will oh, and i am by myself bricks is asleep tanner's at work i don't have him to come save me from the spider <laughs> but don't worry guys <laughs> he made his way to the door and i got super brave <laughs> open the door for him and shoot him outside so he's gone He's back home, hopefully. <laughs> Not in my home anymore. Hopefully he doesn't come back and none of his buddies come back either. Oh, I'm still shaking a little bit. <laughs> but anyway. <sighs> Happy fall. <laughs>